This is Dr. Dayan Shabazz, Associate Professor of Global Business here at Florida a and University. I'm outside the Sybil C. Mobley School of Business and Industry, and I am very proud to present the competitors for this year's Georgia State University Cyber Case Competition. Greetings, my name is Bryce Brown, a third year business administration student from St. Petersburg, Florida. Greetings, I am Cole Johnson, a third year business administration finance concentration scholar from Jacksonville, Florida. Greetings, I am Cameron Napoli, a junior in business administration from Jacksonville, Florida. So throughout our process, we're going to go through a couple of things Dora Enzo has done, and then we're going to take them through our process to see what they could have, should have, and would have done in order to better themselves as a multinational organization. So this is a little bit about Stora Enzo's history. Stora Enzo is a multinational enterprise and a paper company. The company's main products are packaging materials, paper, wooden items, and biomaterials. In 2019, they had sales revenue of 10.1 billion euros. And that shows that this company is a multinational company and they are operating in 35 countries and employ over 26,000 people. But with this case, one may ask, what, what have they done in the past? Like how have their past joint ventures gone? In China, they were seized. They were criticized for seizing land from farmers through threats. And also they had another joint venture in Brazil and they had many lawsuits going on, including corruption and environmental crimes. On to Pakistan's profile. So this is Pakistan's profile. Pakistan has 12 million children that are a part of Pakistan, the Pakistani labor force. And up to 20% of people ages 10 through 17 are workers in Pakistan. And Stora Enzo did a 2012 consultancy report that showed this risk. Um, and they did decide to keep that internal. The International Labor Organization is raising concerns about child labor and the need for action within Pakistan on the child labor issue. The action that they are looking to perform is giving access to better education and alternative livelihood options. So now we're going to get into Stora Enzo's history in Pakistan. In the early parts of 2012, uh, Stora Enzo as a company announced that they will be now entering um, some South American and, and Asian markets due to them having troubles with manuf finding uh, manufacturers and production issues in their home in their in Europe. Um, so between and also later on in 2012, Stora Enzo announced that they will be investing uh, that they would be investing in Pakistan. Um, and between 2012 and 2013. Um, Store Enzo did conduct a country screening that highlighted the child labor issues and other governmental issues that were going on with uh, in Pakistan, but chose to but chose to ignore those and continue with their partnership. With this continuance um, and then them turning the blind eye, uh, in March 6 of 2014, a Swedish magazine uh, by the name of Vekins Afrar uh, ran a story exposing Store Enzo's issues in Pakistan. Um, despite at that time, Store Enzo. Uh, doing things in other countries to sort of highlight some of the child labor laws and, and, and things that are going on in other countries. But this magazine chose to stick with them in Pakistan and sort of look at some of the issues that they will be facing. So with this, um, Story Enzo's reaction is truly one that we wouldn't expect from a multinational corporation. Um, we will sort of expect for them to reply somewhat to what Tylenol did in their case of sort of taking ownership, being transparent, and keeping their shareholders, customers, and the, and the businesses that they are involved with up to date with how things are going. Uh, but instead, Stora Enzo only admitted to one case pertaining to child labor laws um, and said and continued to say without them, 
um, the children would have engaged in prostitution, which is truly something that we don't we we would never expect for a multinational company to to come out and say. Um, so then, following these things, following these headlines and, and all of these things that they were going through in 2015, uh, Story Enzo partnered with the ILO uh, to promote a decent work uh, to to promote decent work and combat child labor in in Pakistan. Um, but the partnership really didn't last that long. In 2017, Story Enzo divested uh, its 35 percent share in the Bully Saha packaging company, which resulted in a loss of 19 million euros, which was shown in their third quarter, third quarter reports in 2017. So to start off, these are golden rules. These golden rules need to be based into any company's core values. This is going to make a solid foundation where you're going into a new country to make sure there are no possible human rights abuses, or if there are, the best way to proceed about them. First is transparency. As we saw with Tylenol, they were very transparent and very straightforward with what happened. They didn't make any excuses. They didn't try to cover anything up. They were direct and got straight to action, which really improved their PR. Next is due diligence. If you're able to be transparent, you need to act on that. You're able to say, okay, we messed up. Do your due diligence into correcting that mistake and making sure it doesn't happen again. With ethical leadership, you need to make sure you're able to improve the country you're going into or you want to have a relationship with them and not just take advantage of cheap natural resources or cheap labor because it's better for your buck. You need to make sure you're passing the baton and making sure everyone's growing from this relationship. So now we'll be getting to the steps of success that we believe are important for all multinational companies to, to follow whenever they are entering a new foreign market. So for step one, we believe it's important for the company conduct, to conduct a preliminary country screening um, and sort of go through any of the things that they may find out of worries, um, any things that they've heard about the country and sort of compile all of those things together and present those to top management and shareholders and get their ideas on those as well. And then in step two, uh, it's important for the company to the company for the company to create a country profile uh, that factors in feasibility, culture, technology, and government, or something similar to a PESC analysis um, that truly is going to give them a, a full picture with no bias um, and, and, and allow them to have a, a greater understanding of the country and the country and company that they will be starting to work with. Next in step three. Um, it's important for them to begin communicating and relationship building with the country slash the, with the country government slash business that the company will be partnering with. Um, during this phase, uh, you may the com the company may be going and in, in for one or two stints to sort of look at look at the the company that they'll be working with, look at some of their facilities, um, get a better understanding of that company's ethics and and the things that they find valuable to their company, and sort of compare compare those to what to what the current company. Um, sort of holds value to their company as well. Next, in step four, um, it's it, this is probably the most important step uh, is conduct on the ground research on the company you'll be on the company they'll be partnering with for 90 to 180 days to get a true understanding of the company of the company and the country. So with this 90 to 180 days, we believe that this will allow the company to get a better understanding and more of a realistic understanding of the company and their day-to-day -day functions um, and some of the issues that they may face, not just from a company standpoint, but from a country standpoint, and, and just get a better understanding of, of the whole, uh, uh, a holistic view of what they will be stepping into from a business standpoint. And lastly, step five. Um, is just to conduct a final risk analysis uh, that compiles all the information gathered from steps one through four and um, present the findings to top management and shareholders. And with this final step, this will be the, the, the final meeting that will tell the company if they should go forward with working with the company or if this is the, or, or if in the end, this is something that they don't see will fit their, their, their company and, and the direction that they want to go. Overall, we hope one of the main takeaways of this presentation is to show that human rights abuses need to be avoided and can be avoided with due diligence, transparency, and ethical leadership within a company's core values. If Sora Enzo had taken our projected path, they would have avoided Pakistan entirely and maybe gone to another country to be able to grow and develop themselves and the other country as well. 
Thank you so much, Georgia State University and the Cyber Team for presenting this case competition with us. We are so happy to participate and show FAMU's big debut with this case competition. We have loved exploring and researching this human rights areas, and we look forward to exploring more in the future.